on behalf of the board, I really want to extend a warm welcome to all of you, all valued members who are joining us at Congress today. And a very special welcome to those of you who are attending for the very first time. And permit me to say a special welcome to Argentina, our only member from South America. They've undergone great difficulties to be here, but they're here. So let me take this opportunity to introduce our board to you. Uh, many of you are new, so you probably don't know our board members. We have Sue Taylor, our vice president, and Todd, the finance director. Ladies, if you just put your hands up. Oh, but it's in front of you, right? <laughs> Raylene Castle, our independent director. Octavia Gibson, the director from the Americas. Tabogo Libots, the director from Africa. Kate Palmer, director from Asia. Janet Wrighton, director for Europe. And Tina Brown, director from Oceano. I would also like to congratulate the members of our netball family who have received national honors from their countries for their contribution to sport. Thank you, sir. From New Zealand, we have um, Kristin Rodder, QSM, Colleen Bond, MNZM, Karen Smith, an ex board member, New Zealand Royal Honours, Ray Wayne Lovat, um, and she's a former chair of Netball New Zealand, um, New Zealand Royal Honours, um, our own Raylene Castle, who got the New Zealand Order of Merit. Um, there is Liz Nicholl, and we know of her connection to netball, CEO of UK Sport, for CBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours, and Jeeva Mentor, who was a nominee for the Sportswoman of the Year nomination at Sport Accord. So let us... What happened? Oh. <laughs> Let us applaud our people. Really. So I will now just highlight some of what has happened in the last two years. In 2013, we said goodbye and thank you to our Chief Executive Officer, Urvasi Naidu, and welcomed Claire Briegel. Claire was interim CEO during 2012 and took up the post permanently in 2014. She has been a great asset to the organization during a period that has witnessed unprecedented growth in the popularity of netball around the world. Netball is now expanding beyond its traditional territories into parts of the world where it has no previous history. This success is due to hard work, an attractive and relevant offering, sound governance, and the increased profile of our sport. The INF is working hard to increase its visibility and influence in the sporting world and beyond. If we are to win more friends and participants and attract the support of commercial partners and other stakeholders, effective advocacy is crucial. In 2013, I became a board member of the Association of IOC Recognized Sports. It is a huge privilege to be able to represent netball and women's sport at this level. I was proud to be given the opportunity to address the world's media at the Commonwealth Games. And later in the year, alongside Marnie Fetcher, Chief Executive of the Netball World Cup 2015, addressed the world media again at the G20 Summit in Brisbane, here in Australia. A uniquely potent opportunity to promote the INF and the Netball World Cup Sydney 2015. INF's engagement with the media is becoming increasingly effective and has moved from being largely reactive to highly proactive with extensive interaction with media all over the world. We now have a media and communications lead in place, Nikki Richardson, and are seeing the impact of the exciting work being done in this area. Beyond the traditional media, 
we are exploiting digital and social media to enable us to engage directly with our target audiences and meet the expectations of netballers who look to see an effective INF presence representing their sport in the digital domain. We have introduced a digital magazine which is available online anywhere in the world where there is internet access, as well as a digital weekly newsletter. Our social media campaign has doubled our followers to both Facebook and Twitter in the last six months and continues to grow. We also have a digital brochure to present to potential sponsors and partners. And Claire will be briefing you more on this later. We continue to meet with the IOC annually at Sport Accord and keep them informed of the progress that our sport is making globally. We are particularly pleased that the IOC has recognized that gender equality may be considered across the whole games and not within a single sport, depending on its unique qualities. That was a point which formed a part of the INF submission to the 2020 agenda. Earlier this year, we were one of 26 recognized international federations to submit applications for inclusion as additional events in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. <laughs> we were not successful. However, we know that a major criterion is the popularity of the sport in the host country, and we were not. Regardless, netball's profile has been enhanced through the application process. The Commonwealth Games are often called Netball's Olympics. We cherish our good relationship with the Commonwealth Games Federation, and they were delighted with the netball event at Glasgow 2014. Building on this success and following on from their sports program review last year, I am pleased to say that netball retains its position as a compulsory sport in the games. Our message that netball, the number one team sport, empowers women's team sport, empowers women and men, girls and boys across the world to achieve and be the best that they can be, whether as athletes, coaches, umpires, or administrators in a safe, fun and fulfilling environment that which is credible and resonates with the media, stakeholders and decision makers. The INF recognizes the importance of working with our membership to build strong relationships with the key ministers in national governments. Since the last Congress, I've, had, I've met with the ministers of sport for New Zealand, England, Jamaica, Scotland, South Africa, Botswana and Malawi. We have discussed the hosting of major events and government support for the development of member nations netball programs. We can engage with these policymakers because the INF speaks with authority and our credibility rests on our reputation and the governance of our sport. As a governing body, we are striving to be the best we can be. We have, for example, undertaken an external review of our board composition to make sure that we are truly effective, not only in our board meetings, but also in our engagement with our members. We aspire to excel and lead the international sporting world in good governance. We have been ensuring that all our policies are in place, including code of conduct, code of ethics, anti-corruption code, and guidelines for safeguarding. As a sport, we continue to evolve. And our rules review, an extremely important and major focal point of the INF's work since last Congress, is giving an opportunity to keep our game evolving, modern, and attractive to participants, spectators, and the media. We want the rules to be clearer, easier to understand, and equitable for all players based on a common interpretation. All members were invited to submit ideas for the rules review, and many of you responded. The rules advisory panel has worked very hard to compile an updated text, which will be presented to you later by RAP for your approval. Umpiring remains the focal point of our game, and in, in an effort to ensure common inter interpretation and application of the rules, there was a training session for all ITP in 2013. 
and a camp for all umpires taking part in the Commonwealth Games in 2014. The INF has also undertaken an umpiring review to establish the current processes, future operations, and strategic and operational options for international umpiring. From the extensive work carried out during this project, clear leadership and the use of technology to open up communication and development were the main threads for improvement. Following on from this crucial review, we have put in place an international umpiring manager, Christina Davidson, who will be providing you with details on the findings and plans going forward. And so what are the event highlights of our journey since our last Congress? We have held two INF Fast Five Netball World Series events in Auckland, New Zealand. Both were great events and we are delighted with the progress this highly media friendly event is making and are very excited about its future. I must thank Netball New Zealand for their vision in showcasing what a spectacular event this could be. They built on what we saw in England for three years. The INF World Youth Netball Championships in Glasgow held after our last Congress in the brand new Emirates Stadium were hugely successful. Following the event, we listened to our members' concerns regarding the selection process. You would all now have been informed that we have come up with a different process for the next World Youth Cup to be held in Gaborones, Botswana in 2017, which will comprise the top four teams from 2013, plus the host, and three from each region, making the final 20 competing countries. The bid application process for the Netball World Cup 2019 progressed during 2014. Three members submitted an expression of interest in 2013, and at the end of June 2014, England Netball put forward a confirmed bid for Liverpool to be the host city. In November, England made a detailed presentation to a bid evaluation committee. The board reviewed the recommendations of the committee and after extensive consultation, I'm delighted to say approve the bid, and England Netball will present later. As mentioned before, we had a fantastic Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, where Netball pre proved to be the hot ticket. The finals, held in the impressive Hydro Arena, sold out in hours. We were honored that Prince Edward, Earl of Wessex, attended the Netball competition on three days and accompanied me to present international umpire Sharon Kelly with a certificate commemorating her 100th international match. Not only did the Games endow Scotland with new facilities, but left them with a team of top bench officials. We also fully understand the importance of taking part in major multi-sport events, where netball can win new friends, develop partnerships, and demonstrate its importance to stakeholders. Netball featured for the first time in the Anoka Youth Games in Gaborone, Botswana in May 2014. I was delighted to have been in Botswana to witness this wonderful celebration of under 18 netball. More recently, netball was included in the Southeast Asian Games, and I want to congratulate Singapore for their determination to get the required number of teams to be able to participate. We draw inspiration and energy from the diverse and important work going on in netball's regions. And I would particularly like to commend Australia's Net Set Go scheme and Pickney Netball in Jamaica for their efforts to keep netball fresh and attract even more young boys and girls. England's Back to Netball program also continues to thrive and Scotland have introduced Bounce Back to Netball both great schemes for getting more women back to our game. I would love to see more members taking a lead from these inspirational projects and to get involved in developing similar innovative schemes in their countries. We have also been working closely with FISU to ensure that net, netball championships in Florida next year will be successful. This is a particularly important as we work to raise our profile in the Americas. We urge members to speak to the representatives here as we need eight countries to participate. 
We have long argued that women's sport deserves more media coverage, more commercial support, and more opportunities for women to compete as professionals. Netball is certainly playing its part to develop elite sporting roles for women. Since the last Congress, two new elite leagues have been launched, the Brutal Fruit Netball Championship in South Africa and the Berger Elite League in Jamaica. Netball South Africa's first semi-professional league, the Brutal Fruit Netball Championship, exists thanks to fantastic support from the South African government, Supersport TV, and South African breweries, a really important example of netball forging effective partnerships across stakeholders with different but overlapping agendas. The ANZ Championship, the Nations Cup, and England Super League continue to keep netball in the limelight and open opportunities for players from other countries to participate and hone their skills. At this year's Sports Accord held in Sochi, Russia, we had the great honor of being awarded the Spirit of Sport Accord Award, beating the three other shortlisted international governing bodies of FIFA, ITTF, and the IWF. We were awarded this accolade in respect of our work with UNICEF and the International Sailing Federation in safeguarding young people in sport, and I was delighted to accept the award on behalf of the INF. <laughs> so netball is doing very well, but we cannot and will not allow ourselves to become complacent. If we are to continue to hold our own against newly energized women's cricket, rugby, and football, we must continue to set the standard for good governance, safeguarding, grassroots investment, and world-class tournaments. We will build on our success and strive to make our sport and our, gov and our governance of that sport the best it can be. Netball will sometimes need to ask itself difficult questions, such as whether gender equality cuts both ways, and if we should do more to promote men's and mixed netball, or whether to do so will compromise our unique ability to bring women's sport to places and cultures where women's roles and opportunities are strictly and sometimes <laughs> brutally circumscribed. These are complex and difficult questions, and I am proud our sport as a board and governing structure willing and able to confront them. So thank you to the INF board members for their contributions and hard work over the period, and to the member countries that have supported them financially to attend board meetings. Thank you to the INF panels and committee members and the commercial working group, to the officiating community, our umpires, and international testing panel members and technical delegates and a very big thank you to the organizing committee here in Sydney for helping to organize our Congress and for hosting what I know is going to be a superb World Cup. We are profoundly grateful also to our sponsors and partners and to those who support the activities of all of our members across the world. And we must never forget that all of these fantastic programs that empower and change lives that bring the netball mantra of fun, fitness, and friendship to millions of women and girls worldwide would not be possible without the scores of individuals who give up their precious free time for our sport, like all of you here. We are, I am proud to say, well-run, contemporary and relevant, and we aim to stay that way. I hope that you will find the next two days enlightening, instructive, and enjoyable. We look forward to the next two years of continued growth and success for netball, the top women's team sport, our game. Thank you.